All right, let's do it. Lady Gaga, Bruno Mars, die with a smile. Ooh, I, I just woke up from a dream where you and I had to say goodbye. Mm. And I don't know what it is. But since I survived, I realized Wherever you go, that's where I'll follow Nobody's promised tomorrow So I'ma love you every night like it's the last night Like it's the last night If the world was ending, I'd wanna be next to you might have two of the most pure singing voices around. I'm not saying they're the two, but they are two pure, natural voices that don't need a lot of help. They just, they just are. Oh. Right next to you. charming bastard damn it bruno save some for the rest of us okay let me start off by saying i want to give mad props to bruno mars again because like i said that voice is pristine i've seen him on some behind the scenes stuff no effects just natural singing beautiful voice not hard to look at either 
But now that I have that out of the way, let me also take a moment to say that even if I walked up to Gaga, let's say we're at a singles bar, right? Or a singles, singles event, mingle with singles. And she was there and I walked up to her to say something. Even if she had just like this giant booger in her nose, I would still be like, do you want to get some dinner? Yeah? Come on, buy a treat. Let's get out of here. And I would take her out to a nice dinner. And then I would ask her questions that would let her talk about herself. I'd occasionally chime in, not much, not like this. Because when, when I wait for you to talk, it's weird. But I would let her say some stuff and I would just let her talk about herself, talk about her experiences. Yeah. I mean, at some point, you know what? I didn't think I would, I didn't think this was coming, but I tell you what, I think even at the end of the night, we have a nice night, nice dinner. We appetizers, dinner was good. We have dessert, we drink, we laugh. She's having a, a rosé, I'm having an old fashioned and we're just laughing and carrying on. It's great. And then at the end of the night when she was like, hey, I had fun. We should do this again. And then she gives me what I assume is her real number, right? Because everybody can say, we should do this again sometime. I know what that means. But she gives me her digits, and it's probably good. As long as it's not like a, a ham and cheese shop down the street. But when she does that, that's when I pull the mad riz, right? And I go, hey. I'm going to give you a call soon. But I want you to know I had a great time tonight. But this whole time, I couldn't stop looking at you for two reasons. One, I think you're really attractive. You, you just have a great presence about you. You kind of light up the room. And I love that. But also, you've had a cornflake stuck in your nose since I went up to you at the party and I still want to take you out again. So handle that, figure all that shit out. But then next time we'll do it again. It'll be great. Yo, mic drop. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> that would be mad games. She would be like, all right, he accepts me for me. That's right, girl, you ain't gotta be perfect with me. Yep. Maybe I should write fanfic. You don't tell her you pretend you didn't notice? Joe, are you sure? That doesn't sound like good advice. Come on, you can't throw tomatoes. What, a drink? I feel like that was Lulu's way of saying, yes, Roscoe, you should write fanfic and then read it for Boop Club. I love that idea, Lou.